So welcome to the part 100. We are making a century on these question sets. So if you have not yet subscribed, do so. There are ample of questions to help you clear the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner Certification. And now let us jump and look at these questions. So we all know that there is a shared responsibility model that AWS promotes. That means some responsibilities you would own as a customer and there are some responsibilities that would be taken care by AWS. So that's cool. Now this is a fantastic diagram. You can pause this video, read this carefully because this explains clearly what are your responsibilities as a customer and what are AWS responsibilities. So the blue lines or the blue things are your responsibilities. The orange ones or the amber ones are AWS responsibilities. Now let us look at this question. So which tasks are the responsibility of the customer as per the shared responsibility model? Option A is wrong because this is taken care by AWS. You do not have an opportunity to patch the operating system. Why? Because RDS. So this is a managed service. That means AWS takes care of managing the infrastructure, provisioning the infrastructure and so on. So you do not take care of these responsibilities. Option B is wrong because you as an AWS customer do not have access to the infrastructure. That means the cables that are connecting to the networks, uh, Cisco cables or any other companies because you cannot enter the premises of AWS. Now D is also wrong because maintaining the physical access control that means there is a security card there. He or she allows someone to get in and out of the AWS data centers. You will not have that access as a customer. So these three are wrong. We have to choose two answers. So we have our two answers, which is managing data encryption, which is meaning that, you know, you can encrypt the data at rest or you can encrypt the data in transit so that nobody can hack your data. Even if they hack it, they cannot read it with the naked eye. And then you have the best practices that you always grant least privilege. That means if someone is trying to gain access to meet you in the office, they will be given access only to the reception area so that, you know, you have a least privilege. You have come to meet someone. You will be only given access to the ground floor reception. You cannot go to the first floor, second floor, the research and development departments and so on. And hence these two would be our final answers. Now let us quickly jump to the next question. This is talking about AWS service feature or tools which will help you visualize the pattern of AWS spending. That means you are already bought, you have already bought a house, you are staying in that house. You want to know now uh, after two couple of months, how much are you spending? How much are you spending on the utility bills, which may include electricity, internet, broadband, and so on? How much are you spending on the maintenance, which can include pipes, taps, electrical connections? Uh, paint repairs and so on for the regular lift maintenance, lift AMS services, maintenance services, or uh, backup services in case the electricity is down. So you will have generator backups available every time. So how much are you spending in the last two months? You want to know that. In order to know that, AWS provides a service called Cost Explorer. This will help you visualize. So you see the term visualize and in our question as well, the question talks about help you visualize the pattern of AWS spending and this will exactly help you manage your AWS costs and usage over time. So you can filter and group your data. You can set the time interval and granularity. Plus you can do a forecasting of your future costs and usage. So this would be our final answer, but let us look at other options. What the hell is DevPay? Okay, so DevPay is a simple to use online billing system. What does it do? It will help you with businesses where you are selling your applications that are built and run on AWS services. CloudTrail is not even a solution which is used for costs. If you want to enable operational risk auditing governance on compliance, then you use that. That means CloudTrail will capture each and every activity that each and every user is doing on the AWS accounts with the resources and so on. So in the office, usually it happens. There is a guy, he likes some girl and he's always trying to stalk that girl on Facebook on Instagram, on Twitter, etc, etc. So what this guy does is he goes into AWS, he tries to see that, okay, what are the activities this girl has been doing for a long time, if he has access to access it, okay. This is very common. Uh, such guys are the silent killers. They just try to monitor people. So instead of monitoring the AWS resources, they also monitor the, the girl. Okay, D is talking about consolidated billing. 
when does consolidated billing help you if you are having multiple aws accounts you want to consolidate the entire bill because you may be having an account for finance department for hr department for it department for marketing and sales department and so on but everything you want to club together why because you will get the discounts related to the volume of trade that you are doing on aws okay but this will not give you a visualization of the pattern of AWS spending. It is like consolidated billing means you have four or five apartments. Now you want to you know, bring everything under one head and understand, okay, these are my operational expenses. These are my maintenance expenses. This is what is costing from a utility standpoint and so on. So hence cost explore would be our answer in this case. These are the use cases you can use for cost explorer. Now, this is the next question. You got to include factors which affect the cost of AWS Cloud. Option A is wrong because if we are talking about Lambda, Lambda is a serverless compute architecture. That means that is, there is no server in the background. It is not like EC2 instance, which is server full. That means there are servers to be managed. This is serverless. If something is serverless, then how does the question of number of unused, 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 Lambda is serverless. Lambda, you will be charged only when the Lambda stuff is running. If Lambda is not running, it is not, it is, and it is not like easy to that. Okay, I will keep the server running. No boss, you use it. It auto kills after 15 minutes. It auto kills. So there is no question of unused Lambda functions. Okay. Now the second stuff, S3 buckets. If I have one bucket, if I have 10 buckets, is it going to matter? Buckets don't matter. The storage matters. If you are having GBs of data inside it, then you will be charged. But buckets is just like folders. You can create hundreds of buckets. You will not having a detrimental effect on the costs. Then option C, it says inbound data transfers without acceleration. Boss, inbound data transfers are free. AWS says, hey, come in, come to me, man, come to me. Give me your data because they want your business. They cannot charge you for the data which is incoming. They charge you for the data which is outgoing. Why do they charge you for outgoing data sets? Because, you know, they want your business. They don't want you to go away from cloud. Take your data away from AWS, maybe to on-premises, maybe to Azure Cloud, maybe to Google Cloud. They don't want to lose business. So D is the right answer. It affects cost. And then E, compute resources that are currently in use. When we talk about compute resources, Consider something like EC2 instances, which are like it's a server. It's a virtual server on cloud and that is going to cost you money. Always remember cloud always says, hey, come to cloud because they say storage is cheap. They never tell you compute is way too expensive. Compute is like the difference between owning a Honda and owning a Mercedes Benz. It is, the difference is so large. So this is my final answer. Now let us look at this next question. Before we go there, have you heard about the term called cloud adoption framework? What is this? It is similar to that. You know, you want to adopt a child. You go to the government agencies and they tell you, hey, you know, this is the framework. These are the policies. These are the forms you fill. This is the timeline it takes for completing the adoption process. Similar to that, we have a set of AWS experience and best practices to help you digitally transform and accelerate your business outcomes. Now benefits, you can grow the revenue, you can increase operational efficiency, like people, you know, whatever the people you have, you can get more out of them by getting, you know, more employee productivity and enhance the customer experience. Now, which I expect is encouraging you to develop a well-architected and cloud-focused applications. See, if you are talking about security, this is all about, you know, providing you uh, enough of security so that your data is safe and secure and it cannot be hacked. Now this portion where we are encouraging the development, this will not increase the development. Governance will not increase the, uh, the development as well because governance is about data governance. Who is using it? Is the data authorized to be used? Are the right levels of controls available to access the data and so on? This question is about something else, man. Now operations, operations means people, the resources are uh, launching in time. You have infrastructure as uh, a code available. The, infrastructure is created as per your desired uh, inputs that has been given and so on. So those are general operations, but that is not something which will give you a you know, development of architecture. Development is always related to platform. This this will help you. So if you have a platform, if you have something like you, you create EC2 instances and you have 
uh, them launched yeah, on a Linux kind of OS, so you have a platform available. Now, you, using this platform, you can increase the development. Like you can build applications, web applications, etc., which are well architected and they may be fulfilling or adhering to all of these six pillars, which is operational excellence, security, reliability, and so on. So I hope you understood the concept behind this. So you have a man and you have a woman. Now, as a part of shared responsibility model, there are some things which a husband will do. There are some things which a wife will do. And there are some things which both will do. They will have common or dual responsibilities. This question is talking about which are those responsibilities which both the husband and the wife are responsible for. Okay, let, let us look at the options. Or if you are talking about option A, physical and environment controls only and only AWS has access to the data centers. You have, as a customer, do not have access to the data centers. For example, if you see, only the husband in this case is a Bollywood star, not the wife. The wife has been made a producer because the husband has earned too much of money and that needs to be managed. So he has launched a company and uh, his wife has become a producer. Easy peasy, yes, because she invested at a time when this guy was no one. She chose to marry him when he was no one. Now, when we talk about account structure, this is something which only you as a customer are responsible for. Option E, choice of AWS region. You as a customer have a choice that you want to make use of which AWS region. If you see here, there are regions in North America, South America, Europe, Middle East, and etc. If you go into North America, you can see these are the regions where it is available. US West, this is in Oregon. US East, this is in North Virginia. US West again, North California, and so on. Similarly, if you can go to these places, like for example, we go to Middle East, and if you see Middle East, what are the regions here? We have two regions, Bahrain and UAE. Then let us go into APAC, Asia Pacific, and then let's look at what are the regions? We have Singapore, we have Tokyo, we have Seoul, we have Mumbai, we have Hyderabad. This is something which got opened recently in 2022. You must be seeing a lot of ads on YouTube with this launch, okay? And then we have Jakarta, Osaka, and so on. So E is your responsibility. You will choose where you want your resources to be deployed. So this would be our final answer. There are two answers which is required. So we have patch management, which you as well as AWS both have joint responsibilities to perform patch management and configuration management. Now, if you look at this documentation where we have shared controls, you clearly see your patch management, configuration management, awareness and training. These are the three responsibilities which you, both husband and wife, or you as a customer and AWS both have joint responsibilities. So this would be our final answer. If you have not got an opportunity to subscribe to this channel, please do so. It will help you with clearing your certifications. We will keep posting many more such videos. These videos are very informative, which will help you, you know, chalk out and understand the concepts. The one thing which is key to all of the videos we post is we try to explain you why these answers are correct. If the answer is wrong, why it is wrong? So the concepts behind this, the logic and explanation behind this is very important. Now, a lot of these content are in the paid area. It's for, for what? For Cloud Kernel and Cloud Ninja members. So you can take this membership and gain access to the paid content, which will help you clear the certification. Stay focused. And we will keep posting many more such informative content with questions, options, answers, and so on.